Hi, in this video I thought we'd have a look at this socket tester. So I've noticed that this particular model has been appearing all over Amazon and eBay recently because it's fairly reasonable priced socket tester. So I think you can get these for around £10. And what this is is a device that you plug into your mains AC socket. Uh, these are available in different configurations so you can just about see the footprint for the Australian uh, plug. You can also get it in the US and the European versions. But you plug it into your socket and it gives an indication of whether the socket is wired correctly. So we've got three LEDs at the top here and incidentally these two LEDs are actually lit properly. I think the camera is just very slightly out of sync um, so we're getting a bit of phasing between these two LEDs. It looks like this one's fading out now but it's actually on. Uh, but it gives an indication of whether the socket is wired correctly or whether it has one of these six different faults. Now there are devices that can detect significantly more numbers of different faults and combinations of them. Uh, this one's a fairly basic device and looks to test around the same number of faults as the original Martindale socket tester. So most of these socket testers originate their design from the original Martindale socket tester. This is a slightly newer version but the original I think was a black plug and had the three neons in it and was able to test a few different potential faults with just quite a simple bit of uh, electronics really. So um, it just had the three neons and some resistors and if the socket was wired correctly all three neons would light up. You'd have your current path through live to neutral, current path through not live to neutral and earth through these two resistors and then the current path from live through to earth. So all of the three neons lit up when it was wired correctly. Then for example if you had a fault with the neutral, so the neutral was missing, um, you would have uh, no current path for this neon because this um, wouldn't have enough impedance to go through all three resistors to light up this neon but this one would light up because it would follow this path here and the other one would light up because it went straight to earth and it could detect various other faults just with this very simple bit of electronics. Since then things have become a lot more complicated. We've got a lot of devices that are based on some electronics and they're able to test more sophisticatedly some other faults um, but I think this one's a fairly basic version. So we'll have a look inside it shortly. I thought what we'd just do first is just verify its operation and then have a little look inside. So the test setup that we've got in the lab is we've got this inline RCD which is connected to this socket and the supply to this is fed from the isolation transformer so we don't accidentally trip out the circuit to the lab. Now one of the problems with these socket testers is they do deliberately put some current down the earth terminal. So if we have a look at the original schematic for the neon type tester you can see we actually have a current path for two of the neons through these resistors, through the neons, to the earth terminal. And one of the problems with this is if you're testing for example a metal faceplate, so you can get metal clad sockets that are designed for slightly more uh, hostile environments, so they're often used in garages or um, in workshops because they're able to take um, a little bit of impact without damage, but those are connected to the mains earth. So let's say we've got our socket at this point here. If we had a downstream fault of the earth and it wasn't connected, if we're then trying to dump some current through to the earth terminal, we would actually raise this point up to 240 volts if it was completely open circuit and potentially have a couple of milliamps available at that point, which would give quite a noticeable shock. And uh, Fluke did recall all of their socket testers and they never replenished um, the product line. So what they actually did was they recalled all of the devices and then they sent out a two-pole tester uh, as a replacement instead. This doesn't actually do the socket testing, this is just a, another means of testing whether something is live or not. So you, you can sort of get an idea of whether the socket's wired correctly by probing it in different ways, uh, but this was sort of the best thing they could do really to give you um, to take a potentially dangerous device off the market because the risk is you know if you've got a few milliamps flowing uh, you're going to get quite a noticeable shock 
and you know you're going to be grasping this to plug it into the socket with your fingers probably on the socket and um, you know that's not a great thing. Uh, not every manufacturer has taken their device off the market which is quite interesting um, because they all suffer from the same fault and what we've got here is a milliamp clamp meter connected to the earth conductor and if we turn on this device you can see this one is actually quite poor in that it's conducting 4.4 milliamps down the earth conductor so that would be really quite a noticeable shock. Uh, it, um, it would feel worse um, you know if you were holding the plug like this because it would be on small contact areas you'd probably not end up in a situation where you're grabbing onto the socket and not be able to let go but it would be certainly an experience that you'd uh, not forget. So that is one downside to these and something that you should bear in mind if you're testing um, metal sockets. So aside from that, uh, first of all I thought we'd just test whether the RCD test function actually works. Um, I don't think this one actually has a, a max hold. You can hold the, the value that's currently set but I can't uh, get it to trigger to see how much current actually flows. But if we press this button here, you saw that little LED blink and we've now lost power to it. So the RCD has done its job. That's indicated that the RCD is functioning in some manner. Obviously it doesn't test the trip times and all of that kind of thing. It's just a quick indication to make sure that the either that the RCD is working or you can use it um, to purposely trip the RCD if you're not sure what circuit um, you're working on you can press that and just isolate the circuit quite easily. Right, so we can now go ahead and simulate some of the other faults. So if I disconnect the earth, you can see that center LED goes out and it matches the open ground indication just here. We can simulate the open neutral. And there we go, so just the middle LED lit there, that matches here. Open live is basically the device not powered up at all. So there we go, we've got no live connection now and the device is just powered off. The next fault is live and ground reverse. And there we go, so we've got these two LEDs lit now, that's the same as that. Live and neutral reverse. There we go, so just the two outside LEDs matching this. And then we've got live and ground reverse with a missing ground. So that's all three LEDs lit up indicating a live ground reverse with a missing ground and therefore this device does seem to work properly. There are probably scenarios where it doesn't work very well. So in this um, setup here I've got basically an ideal setup. So very short leads, uh, very um, rigid connections to the various conductors. In a real life situation uh, you have things like capacitive coupling on open conductors to worry about which may give false results but as I said this is just a quick first pass that the device is uh, sorry that the socket is wired properly it's not intended to replace a full inspection of the wiring. So that's the testing done let's have a little look inside to see what it's like. So the screws are hidden under the front sticker you can see I had a little go with the um, pry tool uh, before realizing it was screwed together and there we go so we've got the RCD test button which isn't actually a, uh, a button it's uh, a set of contacts that contact actually onto the PCB we've got our LCD and the three LEDs and quite a lot actually on the PCB compared to what I was expecting let's have a closer look so just taking a closer look at the circuitry, it looks like we've got sort of three separate areas of circuitry. So first of all, we've got the electronics associated with the RCD test functionality. So we've got four uh, 1.6K resistors. So four times 1.6K gives us 6.4 kilo ohms. At 230 volts that gives us a trip current of about 36 milliamps so it's delivering 36 milliamps to the earth pin in an attempt to trip the RCD. Then we've got the digital voltmeter so this chip here is only associated with driving the LCD it doesn't appear to be connected in any way to the LEDs so we've got our diode bridge network so this takes the uh, incoming live 
at earth and neutral, feeds it through this diode network and that means no matter what combination of um, incoming terminals you've got, as long as you've got a live um, coming in, you can get your um, DC coming out to power the chip and to give an indication of the AC voltage. So we've got this divider network here with these uh, resistors to give the reference voltage into the chip so that it can work out what voltage it is. And then if you look at where the traces for the LEDs go, uh, so they generally go down here, there is one trace up at the top. It goes down into these very similar blocks, so you can see uh, a few of these blocks with the transistor, the diode, and a couple of resistors. And this is basically replicating the circuit that we saw with the neons, just with the Zeno diodes replicating the, um, the higher voltage that these neons take to strike. So these neons in the circuit, they strike at something like 70 volts. Below 70 volts, they don't light up, which is how you get sort of that threshold um, with these resistors working so that you don't get sort of dim glowing neons. We've done the equivalent here uh, with the Zener diodes on the electronics. So a fairly l simple little bit of uh, electronics here. It does have a glass fuse protecting the incoming connection. Interestingly, it is just connected to the live, um, but obviously you could have the live on any combination of pins. So the fuse is somewhat pointless. Um, you know, if you had your live coming in on the earth pin and you had a fault which then caused all the current to flow between earth and neutral on here, um, you know, the fuse wouldn't do anything, so this would blow up anyway. The casework does have a sort of labyrinth seal, so when the case is properly closed, you probably would enclose the blast of components blowing up, so you probably would just hear quite a loud bang. Uh, and it wouldn't be too destructive, um, but that's probably the only real complaint really uh, in terms of the construction. So I think that's about all there is to see with this device. It is quite nicely made, it is pretty rugged, and probably would survive um, you know, a bit of abuse in the tool bag. I think it's probably aimed more at the DIYer, um, but I certainly don't really see that many problems with it. Um, the only things really are the fusing, if you're going to include a fuse on this type of device, which is designed to detect faults, really you should have three fuses, one on each line, because the live connection could be on any or multiple pins. So, uh, like I said, if you had um, the live on the earth pin, for example, and had a valid neutral connection, that's bypassing that internal fuse altogether. So if there was a fault, it would just blow the arse out of all the electronics. Um, so you do need to do that properly. And the other thing with this particular device is that it did have that very high earth current through the earth pin, um, which is something that does affect all of these types of devices, but that 4 and a bit milliamps is quite a high current. That's higher than some of the other devices that I've seen in the past, and something to be aware of. Now, given that this is the Pro model, um, there are a few features which would have been nice, um, there is a basic model which doesn't have the RCD test or the LCD for the voltage readout, it just has the three LEDs. Um, but it would have been nice to have an audible uh, buzzer or a beeper or something. Some of the more expensive devices from the better known brands have a beeper so that uh, it gives a continuous tone if everything is okay, or and it will uh, intermittently beep if there's a problem. But that's also a really handy feature because you can go and plug it into a socket and then run down to the fuse board turn off the circuits until you find the right one um, for the circuit that you're going to work on. You still obviously have to perform safe isolation procedures and test with your two-pole tester, but it's a nice quick way to find uh, which circuit you've got this plugged into. Uh, and then there's a few other things. So you could include some very basic earth loop impedance testing, which some of the more expensive devices do. Uh, but if for a device of this class, it's probably absolutely fine. It's um, you know built well enough that it would probably survive a um, a tool bag for a couple of years, um, and for DIY use, um, you know it's basically fine until it got lost. And at ten pound or so, it's uh, not too bad in terms of value. So, like I said, these are available from Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, and Banggood. I'll put a link down below if you are interested in taking a look at these. Um, certainly uh, not too bad in my opinion. I'll probably throw this into my tool bag because uh, I have been missing the Fluke uh, socket tester that I used to have. Uh, I did also have a socket in C1 
and I can't for the life of me find that anywhere. That one did have all of the functions, so a loop test and a, a buzzer as well. Um, but I think this will be fine for now. So hopefully you found that video interesting, and until next time, thanks for watching.